What's going on Neon Nation? Welcome back to the Neon Arcade for some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. Today we're going over some forecasts for CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk 2077 in the new year via business outlet Bloomberg, some new Cyberpunk 2077 related products available for pre-order, some more details from John Mamais, some countdown to the Dark Future episodes, and some fan creations in art. First, let's jump into some of the forecasts made in an article via business news publication Bloomberg.com regarding CD Projekt and Cyberpunk 2077's future. CD Projekt snagged a spot on Bloomberg's 50 businesses to watch in 2020, largely due to Cyberpunk 2077, with estimated sales growth numbers just over 445%, and 12-month sales being 108.34 million as per analysts. In a brief synopsis as to why CD Projekt will have such astronomical numbers, Bloomberg's Matthew Canterman says, quote, CD Projekt SA, Poland's largest video game maker, could beat analyst 2020 sales forecasts with the April release of its much-anticipated role-playing game, Cyberpunk 2077. The game could sell 20 million units in the launch year. Now I'm no analyst, but what I can tell you is as a console exclusive, Red Dead Redemption 2 Rockstar's open world western epic brought in 25 million on just the PS4 and Xbox One in just under 12 months. The Witcher 3 saw a surge in console sales relative to PC, but a significant portion of the player base is still on PC, and with games like Death Stranding and Red Dead 2 being ported to the PC, it hasn't been a better time to build or buy a personal computer for gaming. 20 million seems like a fair conservative estimate, but it could eclipse that 25 million precedence set by Rockstar fairly easily if marketing and release go smoothly. Next up we have an article from Oz Gamers which adds more detail to an interview we went over in a prior news episode with the head of the Krakow studio John Mamais. In a question regarding recent hirings and the growth of CD Projekt Red, Mamais mentions quote, We weren't smart enough to know how many people we needed. When we wrote the initial concept for Cyberpunk 2077, we didn't know. So we grew as the design was developing. And really, you don't know how many cinematic animators you're gonna need until you have a scope for the number of scenes you're gonna have in the game. We didn't have that in the beginning, we just knew that we wanted to have cool cinematics and be as big as The Witcher 3. We ended up hiring a lot more people than what was needed for The Witcher because the fidelity and overall requirements of 2077 crept up on us. When it comes to the design and world building, Mamace mentions that quote, given the size and scope, we have to do some procedural generation of the things that you see. You don't want artists to go in and place individual pipes or pieces of trash, so we had to incorporate a lot of things like that into our process. The crowd systems we've seen so far are incredibly impressive, and John Mamace extrapolates on this by saying, quote, We kinda had to do this because it's a big city setting, right? You need crowds of people moving around or it won't look right. It was very technically challenging and it still is. We're working on it, in fact. Last time I talked to the technical director, he talked its current status as a real achievement where we've got all these people in the same space moving around. Different from the Witcher crowds because if you look closely, they're all very similar to each other in how they look and move. In Cyberpunk, these are all, in a way, unique characters moving around the space. It's a combination of AI tech and art. I don't even know how to explain how it exactly works, but I can say that it was demonetized hard and that we're still working on it. General development wise, Mamace concludes with the fact that CDPR are committed to creating big great looking AAA games and as technology changes they must adapt while still pushing the envelope on how a game can look. He mentions that he thinks Cyberpunk is going to be a big showpiece in terms of tech and that they're going to be the one last exceptional looking title on this current generation of hardware. Tons of brilliant looking games come out at the tail end of a console generation cycle, so I'm really looking forward to a meaningful step up from The Witcher 3, which still looks great even by today's standards. Moving on, we have a new look at some Arasaka Security Forces in this cover art for PC Gamer Magazine and map size differences between last year's 2018 trailer and the one that can be seen here. First take a look at some of the Arasaka Riot Police fending off Night City citizens. These guys have battering rams trying to get into the metro train where V is sitting with a briefcase that looks pretty suspect. Now shout out to this reddit user for providing a side to side comparison with the Nilf Guardian soldiers from The Witcher, they look very similar in their design, again drawing inspiration from The Witcher. We've seen The Witcher emblem on Deshaun's shoes, so despite CD Projekt Red's hesitance when it comes to bridging The Witcher and Cyberpunk, we know that there will be at least some small references. Moving on to the most interesting part of the image, we have the new map, which looks a little bit different from the old map we saw in the 2018 trailer. Now if we look very closely, we can see a ton of new stops added in virtually all directions, with the most significant length added on the south side near Rancho Coronado and in the north near Westbrook. Also keep in mind that this map denotes only the horizontal sprawl and isn't indicative of the additional verticality which may have been added over the span of development as well since the game will heavily rely on traversing up and down mega buildings and skyscrapers. 
Next, we have a job posting from CD Projekt Red for a senior programmer working within the confines of their partnership with Vancouver-based Digital Escapes, who specialize in developmental tool creation, asset production, and cloud computing, amongst other things. This is very intriguing as this was posted just over two weeks ago and is likely connected to the multiplayer component of Cyberpunk 2077. Next up, we have a couple Cyberpunk 2077 products now available for pre-order. First, we have the super anticipated Samurai Bomber jackets, which can now be pre-ordered on both the European and the US store. It's probably my favorite thing on here at the minute. The Samurai logo on the sleeves is a nice touch to the similar jackets they were giving out at E3. Just letting you guys know before you drop $300 on those exact jackets on eBay, since these are much more reasonably priced. We also have the official game guide coming from Piggyback Games, which comes in a standard and CE version. This is the guide for the video game and is different from the World of Cyberpunk 2077 lore book and the art book that comes in the collector's edition. This guide is described as, quote, the complete official guide to Cyberpunk 2077, a massive book covering everything in the game. With details on every challenge and feature, the guide offers streamlined progression throughout the entire adventure as well as a commanding expertise on all key systems. 100% authoritative, all branching paths, all side quests, all rewards, and all endings fully mapped out. Also includes optional challenges, minigames, unlockables, secrets, and more. Foolproof explanations, every mission, every game mechanic, every meaningful choice covered with accessible solutions. High-res maps of Night City, each annotated with locations of collectibles and points of interest. In-depth coverage of all major game systems, including character progression, abilities, perks, street cred, achievements, amongst others. Annotated screenshots and sequential steps show optimal ways through each mission, and yada yada yada, this is a big book at over 350 pages. Obviously, completionists would likely be interested in this, but me personally, I'm not going to open this up until I've experienced the world in all its glory multiple times. Next, we have our countdown to the Dark Future episode, series continuing. These are facts about the cyberpunk lore from Artal Sorian Games, who created the source material of Cyberpunk 2077 in Cyberpunk 2013 and 2020. We only have one fact pertaining to this topic, so next episode, expect a little bit more. In episode 301, we learn about the Solos of Fortune. Little concrete information is known about the Solo to Vicky. She's a Russian born and her skills suggest special Russian training. She worked as a Solo for hire in 2017 in the States, but then went to Europe to join terrorist groups in an anti-biotech revolution. John Jones is another Solo and more straight edge than to Vicky. He was a specialist in finding lost children and would just show up randomly for his good Samaritan duties. Finally, we have our fan art section, so check out these community creations from the past little while. Thanks for watching guys and for more Cyberpunk 2077, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.